This is the last lecture for nematode parasites. We can take an idea about dirofilaria immetis. We know from the past lecture that dirofilaria immetis is non causing non microfilarial pulmonary eosinophilia or tropical pulmonary eosinophilia or a microfilaremic filariasis as we call it also. Uh, its distribution is in tropical areas in Africa and Asia and in the areas endemic with lymphatic filariasis. The final host is the dog. Man is an incidental host for dirofilaria in metis, where life cycle doesn't complete like that in the dog, but the juveniles remain in the tissues of human beings. Uh, the intermediate host is Culex and Aedes species of mosquitoes. This is the shape of Dirofilaria, Dirofilaria male and female here. The female is thicker and whitish and more whitish in color than the male. It is about, we can see it is about six to seven milli, uh, centimeters in length and um, they are present in the big blood vessels of the and they give microfilari which are present in circulation. These are just similar to those of Wuchereria bancrofti, but in human beings it doesn't reach maturity and give filari. The larvae rarely reach maturity in humans. They mostly die while migrating and form emboli in the pulmonary artery, what we call pulmonary dirofilariasis, cough, thoracic pain, fever, dyspnea, and hemoptysis occurs to the infected people. The disease may be called tropical pulmonary eosinophilia or non-microfilarial pulmonary eosinophilia. X-ray, we can show coin-shaped shadows in the lung. Accidental discovery of the worms can occur when we do any abdominal operation. We can find it in the abdominal fat. And uh, I made a paper about one case with Dirofilariasis, and this was brought to me by Dr. Ahmad Sadeh, the professor of microbiology from an, uh, a neighbor of him in Almenia. Serological tests also are beneficial, especially because we use the antigen of Dirofilaria immetis for diagnosis of now we come to Dracanculus medinensis. It is called also Medina worm, called also Guinea worm, and it is used as the serpent present in the medical um, uh, in the medical uh, uh, slogan. Uh, the disease is called. Dracanculosis distribution is in now it is present in India, Pakistan. Also, it was present and recorded in Saudi Arabia and Yemen. It is also in tropical Africa. Uh, the host is mainly human, but reservoir hosts include dogs, cats, horses, cattle, foxes any animals who drink infected water. The intermediate host is cyclops and other copepods present in fresh water.
This is the life cycle of Dracanculus. Um, the infection occurs when human being drinks water with infected cyclops. Uh, then the adult grow in the the larvae penetrate the host stomach and intestinal wall and they mature and reproduce further in the silomic areas in the peritoneum and then the fertilized female worm migrates to the surface of the skin causes a blister and discharges larvae from this blister if the blister comes in contact with water. The larvae are engulfed by, the first stage larva is engulfed by the cyclops and grows into second stage and third stage larva which gives infection to men. The adult female is up to 80 centimeter long by one quarter of centimeter breadth. The adult male is about four to five centimeter by 12 millimeter. Uh, the larva usually is coiled or making a U shape and it is about 220 micromillimeter in length. We have here the cyclops which is the intermediate host of Dracanculus. And also we have here a slide with Villar V of Dracanculus medinensis coming from the female. The worm wanders in the subcutaneous tissue. Allergic reactions of the tissues can manifest as urticaria with fever, giddiness, gastrointestinal symptoms in the form of nausea and vomiting. There is also dyspnea and infraorbital edema. All these symptoms are of the delayed hypersensitivity reaction, which occurs as an allergic reaction for the adult worm and its secretory excretory antigen. Also, there is secondary bacterial infection in the worm subcutaneous tissue tract which may produce arthritis, fibrous ankylosis of the joints and contracture of tendons. Also, there is high eosinophilia. The worm passes down to reach the legs or feet, sometimes the forearm and hands and make a blister where a loop of uterus comes out. The blister ulcerates with severe burning, itching, and inflammation and secondary infection sometimes. The larvae come out when the patient gets in contact with water. This is a picture of a blister. This blister ulcerated after a while and when we pour water on the blister, a part of the worm comes out this part here. It comes out for the larvae voided outside. Um, diagnosis is usually clinically by finding the blister or the track of the adult worm under the skin. Calcified worms also after they die could not be de could be detected by x-ray wherever they are. Also intradermal tests and serological tests as indirect fluorescent antibody tests can be done. On water contact with the blister, the larvae are stimulated to be released and they can be easily collected and examined under the microscope.
treatment is by removal of the worm by traditional methods is the best. Here we can see that the worm is coiled on a wooden stick and it is pulled gradually from the leg of the patient. Here, when the leg of the patient is immersed in water, you see the leg is an immersed in water, we can see a foamy like structure here. This is due to thousands of larvae coming out from the uterine loop. Control is by drinking water purification by boiling or adding potassium permanganate. Also, reservoir host control, we can control the reservoir host either by deworming or by killing of the prey animals. The last nematode we must study is anisakis. Anisakiasis is a disease by tissue nematodes of marine animals. It is a zoonosis. Anisakis and pseudo terra nova are the species which can infect men. The adults inhabit the mucosa of stomach and large intestine in case of pseudo terra nova. A human infection occurs by consumption of raw fish in Japan and Southeast Asia, South America, Netherlands, or Holland. In this case, it is caused by eating raw fish or seafood infected with larvae of anisakis. This is the life cycle of anisakis. We find here that marine mammals excrete the unembryonated eggs like dolphins. The unembryonated eggs mature in water. Then they are taken by crayfish. The larva is free swimming and can be taken by crayfish or crustaceans in water. Crustaceans are taken by fish and fish is eaten by the dolphins again. This is the life cycle and fish here can be considered a paratonic host. Then men, if, if men eat undercooked fish also can get the infection and the adult worm uh, at the larval stages settle under the mucosa of stomach or cecum and colon. Adult causes eosinophilic granuloma in the intestinal wall. Clinically, there is severe gastric upset with nausea, vomiting, severe epigastric pain. Ingested larvae may be cupped out and while they are migrating in the circulation after penetration of stomach, uh, sorry, penetration of intestine, chronic infection shows a picture like Crohn's disease in the colon, and it is diagnosed by endoscopy and biopsy. Treatment is endoscopic removal of adults or giving albendazole for. Now we must have an idea about medicinal leeches. Medicinal leeches are several species of leeches, but the most commonly is Hyrudo medicinalis. Hyrudo medicinalis saliva 
is used in medical ointments and medical applications to cause uh, as an anticoagulant because it it causes the blood to ooze continuously and feed the adult leech fully mature adults can be up to 20 centimeter in length and are green brown or greenish brown احنا بنقول عليهم المجموعه دي العلق الطبي وده بيتستخدم كان من زمان في الحجامه للناس اللي هم بيبقى عندهم هايبرتنشن الناس اللي هم بيبقى عندهم كمان اريثروسايتوزيس فكانوا بيستخدموا العلاج بتاعهم هو الهيرودوميديسيناليس ده بيحطوه على السكن وبيمتص البلاد بكميات كبيرة بحيث انه يعمل ريليف للبيشنت. These organisms have two suckers, the anterior and posterior sucker. After piercing the skin and injecting the anticoagulant which is called hyrodin and anesthetics to make the patient comfortable, they suck out blood and the preferred habitat for this species is muddy freshwater pools and ditches with plentiful weed growth and in, in temperate climates علشان كده ممكن بنلاقيه في الترع وفي ناس بتشتكي منه في الترع لما بينزلوا الترع مثلا علشان يعملوا ال اللي يحطوا المكن بتاع الري او انهم عشان يغسلوا المواشي بتاعتهم بيشتكوا منه ليهم هم وللمواشي واحنا يمكن برضو خدنا عينات من الليتشز دي وشفناها ودرسناها واغلبها فعلا كان الهيرودو ميديسيناليس They provide an effective means to reduce blood coagulation, relieve venous pressure from pooling blood, and also especially after plastic surgery. They are used now for plastic surgery. كلنا عارفين المراهم زي الهيموكلار وزي الاكستروما دول اساسا معمولين من الهيروجين ده اللي هو بيعمل انتي كواجلانت افكت اند كوزز اديجنز تو 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 ات كوزز تو ريليف ذا فينس بريشر اند ذا هيلبس هيلينج